So here we go again with another Adventist video uh, I'm going to do here exposing Ellen White's false first vision. The first vision we're going to discuss is the one here in the 1882 early, early writings. This comes with a warning. 2 Corinthians 11, 3, and 4, where the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. He's basically frustrated and worried for them. And then he says this. He says, for if someone comes and preaches a Jesus other than the one that we preached, I'm afraid you're just going to accept it. Well, that's Adventism. Someone has come and preached a false Christ. Not to the Corinthians, but to you followers of Adventism. And you have a false Jesus. This video here is going to be on Ellen, like I said, her first vision. And we got silver trumpet, left hand carrying Jesus. As you saw in the morning, all references, unless otherwise stated, are to fake, false Christ throughout this video. Ellen White's affinity for physical objects is bizarre. It's taken us thus far from angels carrying gold cards, spirit guides gifting her green cords, and now we got left hand carrying Adventist angel Jesus with a silver trumpet. The book Early Writings, by far, was as I did my research on this, was the account cited the most. It's not the only account of this vision, by the way, but it was the account cited the most. So we're going to look at early writings here. Let's look at the book here. You can see early writings, the very same one I just held up. That's my original 1882 second edition. We're going to look on page 11 and what's it, what's it say about this uh, Christ here of the uh, Adventist church. You know, you can look upon his head, crown of many, uh, were many crowns. You can see even above that, his hair was white and curly. But what's it say about him? In his left hand, a silver trumpet. Next page, page 12. Con she continues. Then Jesus' silver trumpet sounded. So Jesus sounded his silver trumpet. Now, like I said earlier, by no means was this the first or earliest account of this. I have a, another account I'm going to show you here right now in a sketch of the Christian experience and published by James White. You can see here on page 11, the Son of Man, and it says, what about him? Underline in red. In his right hand was a sickle, and in his left hand was a silver trumpet. Well, wonderful. So there it is. So we got... Jesus has a silver trumpet in his left hand. Uh, please, Adventist, and you can even use the clear word Bible. Show me in the Bible where it says Jesus Christ has a silver trumpet in his left hand. Where in the word of God will I find such an event? Uh, I don't know. That's your challenge for this video. Like I said, this, this vision uh, of hers is cited as what we just read from is the first vision. This first vision of hers, by the way, is a well-known deception, controversy, and cover-up. Uh, by the way, Ellen uh, first, uh, I'm just going to call him Ellen's spirit brother, Joseph Smith. He also had first vision problems. I find it fascinating. Um... I find that the prophets, like Prophet Ellen White, Prophet Joseph Smith, both have controversies surrounding their first visions. And I did a video on that, Defeating Adventism number 25, showing the deception that the Seventh-day Adventist Church did with Ellen White. And what did they do? Well, they removed 39 words from Ellen's first vision. And you can see those. 39 removed words here on this picture from Defeating Adventism 25, where they removed those words. Funny. I thought Ellen White was a prophet and heard things from God. So who are these people um, who edited this book and removed words purportedly from God? I mean, Joseph Smith people do the same thing. Now in this vision, we got a Jesus, right? Now, not only did we remove words, you can go watch Feeding Adventism 25, 
figure out why that happened. It's very interesting. But now we got a, a Jesus with a silver trumpet in his left hand. You know what? I, so I, I had to do a search in my Bible software. So let me do a search. Let me constrain that search and say, I want to find the word silver and I want to find the word trumpet, but in the same Bible verse and search the whole Bible. So they don't even have to be together. Just find them in the same verse and, and look what I found on my search results. I found zero, zilch, nada, absolutely nothing. Every time a Seventh-day Adventist says, we believe in the Bible, sola scriptura, you know what? You can be assured that Adventist is not telling you the truth. Now, whether they're doing this on purpose or by accident, because that's what they've been taught, we'll leave that for another, another day. Adventists do not believe in the Bible alone. Adventists believe in Ellen White and her silly, mythical visions. Now, this this topic was made known to me because of the Green Cord series. And some uh, formers were saying, well, what about, you know, speaking of Jesus, did you know he carried a silver trumpet? And I said, no, I don't remember reading that. And I went back and read it and went, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Jesus got a silver trumpet. My first reaction was, silver, why, why doesn't Jesus have a gold trumpet? And then I thought, you know, the Mormons, their angel Moroni, he's got a gold trumpet. But yet Adventist angel Jesus, he doesn't even get a gold trumpet. Got to give him a silver trumpet. So, here's my statue. This is the angel Moroni with his gold trumpet. See, Adventist angel Jesus can't even get a gold one. Um, he's got to get a silver one. This is the angel, by the way, who sits on top of, uh, not all, but most Mormon temples with his gold trumpet. He's got the Book of Mormon here, by the way, too, if, if you can see that and look closely. So, he's, a, he's got a trumpet. He is announcing something. When you see these Moroni angels sitting on top of Mormon temples, Moroni's doing something. Do you know why Moroni is on the top of these temples? We're going to look here now. Here's a group called FAIR, Faithful Answers, Informed Response. Look what they say underlined. Moroni was sent as a messenger to Joseph Smith. Well, Joseph Smith got angels showing up to him, and so did Ellen White. And what's it say next? Mormons see Moroni as the fulfillment of the angels mentioned in the book of Revelation. Oh no, let's continue reading. Look what it says now, Revelation 14, 6 and 7, the everlasting gospel. Read the box with me. The angel statue thus represents the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations, calling all to worship and give glory to God in preparation for a second coming of the Lord. If I did not read, or if you did not see, let me say, this page that you just saw, and I was just to read that red box to you, you at Venice would say, Oh, you're reading some Adventist literature. Uh, well, apparently, the Mormons have the everlasting gospel before the Seventh-day Adventists. Now, like I said, FAIR, the group FAIR, is not an official uh, uh, arm of the uh, Latter-day Saint Church. They are a defender of the church, but not official. Let's look at the official church. Let's see what it says. Look here. So here's the official church website, and they're going to answer the question, why, did these temp why do temples have Moroni at the top? And, and they're going to look at the history of it. So let's look at the history. And the article reads down, and so I just highlighted just part of it. And, and they're going back in time when history, when actually at the temples, some of the first angels, they didn't name him Moroni yet, and you can see here in the box. So when Joseph Smith is building the Nouveau Temple, they put a weather vane on the temple because, well, that's what everybody did. It was a very common theme. But here's what still applies today. This unnamed angel holds a trumpet to his lips and a book in his hand. It references the angel in the book of Revelation heralding the second coming. Revelation 14.6, the everlasting gospel is what they're preaching. Isn't that interesting? Moroni is preaching the everlasting gospel. Now, we're going to look at one more source. I have this source here. Of course, if we're going to look at Mormon doctrine, well, let's look at the book called Mormon Doctrine. A very well-known, authoritative gentleman within Mormonism 
Bruce McConkie. Let's look here on screen. You can see his book, Mormon Doctrine, and the title page. Now we're going to go to the page on Moroni. And what to say about Moroni? He's an angel of privilege and power. And then let's read the bottom. He came to the prophet and revealed the Book of Mormon, as we saw in the statue's hands. This coming was in partial fulfillment of John's vision of another angel flying in the midst of heaven to commit the everlasting gospel to man, Revelation 14, 6, and 7. Wow. So here it is. Mormonism predates Adventism. The Mormon everlasting gospel came first. So gold trumpet carrying Moroni here beats silver trumpet angel Adventist Jesus to the gospel. He got it first. Now, I want you to recall, Defeating Adventism number 25. If you haven't seen it, I've got a link in the show notes. You ought to go look at it. Because in that I did a video on the unbiblical pre-creation events of both the Latter-day Saint Church and the Adventist Church. They both have these councils of God and Jesus and conversations they have and what they're doing that are not in the Bible, that happened before the creation, but yet are given by their prophets. I did a comparison of those there. So with that said, as I'm thinking, I'm putting this together, I said, I think I know what happened. We got gold trumpet carrying Moroni here in the pre-creation event, met silver trumpet left hand carrying Adventist Jesus in the pre-creation event, and they got together and Moroni said, hey, I'm going to preach the everlasting gospel first, and silver Adventist Jesus, trumpet Jesus said, hey, I think I'll do the same thing. Myths and fabrications is what we have in Mormonism and in Adventism. Okay, so gold trumpet, Moroni, and silver trumpet carrying Jesus. Where did all this come from? Where did Ellen White get this vision? Here's what we know about Ellen White. She does not have an original thought in her head. But she is a well-known literary thief and does so routinely. Let's look here. Poor William Foy. Look what he has in his book from 1845. This predates Ellen White's vision. William Foy had a vision of, look at the top, the view of the mighty angel having a trumpet of pure silver. Huh, what a coincidence, right? But William Foy on page 18 says what? Against his breast, this is some unnamed angel, and across his left, there's the left hand again, left hand was as it were a trumpet of pure silver. So there it is. Ellen White doesn't have an original thought in her head, stole this visionary concept from William Foy, like she has done other things, by the way. She was well known for that. So let's look here. Mormon angel, Adventist angel. Some comparisons. Moroni, you saw earlier, he's an angel of privilege. Adventist angel Jesus, he's an archangel. He's an angel of rank. Both have something to do with the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, 6, and 7. Moroni is standing on the temple announcing it, and it has as its subject a Christ of 1844 pronouncing judgment. Moroni, he's got a gold trumpet. Jesus, Adventist Jesus that is, he got a silver trumpet. Remember this, especially if you're an Adventist, the Apostle Paul was writing to the Corinthians. He could have been writing to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. As a matter of fact, he should have showed up in 1844 and says, For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus, other than the one we complain, com proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one that you accepted, you're going to put up with it. You're going to accept it. In closing here. It's been proven time and time again on this channel, Ellen White is a fraud, a literary thief, and a false prophet. 
It's also been shown on this channel over and over again that the Christ of the Adventist Church is a false Christ. That's why you got that warning at the, at the beginning here. Just as the Christ of the Mormon Church is a false Christ, the Christ of the Adventist Church is a false Christ. The Christ of the Adventist Church did not die on the cross for man's sin. As John 1930 said, Christ said on the cross as he died, it is finished. But it's not finished in Adventism. The atonement carries today in the investigative judgment. You have a Jesus in heaven dressed like a Levitical priest atoning for sins in heaven. But Jesus is not a Levitical priest. He's a priest after the order of Melchizedek forever. Hebrews 7, 17. The Bible also says you can't atone for sins without the shedding of blood. There is no shedding of blood in the Adventist false investigated judgment. So we've got a fake Jesus atoning for blood, which the Bible says you can't even do because you're not shedding blood. we got a, a fake Jesus taking sins to heaven. Go figure. we got a, a fake Jesus who's going to place the sins of man on a scapegoat. But John 1.29 says, of John the Baptist, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As I always jokingly say, I'm sure if I pick up my clear word Bible, which is right down there, and pick up and read John 1.29, it says, Behold Satan who takes away the sins of the world. Because that's what Seventh-day Adventists believe. They don't believe John 1.29. You know, this video is, is, is also going to show me a, a, another thing or two about Seventh-day Adventists, and that is their propensity to defend their prophet. They will defend Ellen White and her prophetic myths, fantasies, and nonsense, and they will do so at the expense of the Holy Bible. This just proves Adventism is not biblical. Let's finish here. Look with me here. For a time is coming. Time will come. It is come. When people will not tolerate healthy doctrine, but will, but with itching ears will surround themselves with teachers who cater to their people's own desires. They will refuse to listen to the truth and will turn to myths. At Venice, you are listening to myths. Jesus does not have a silver trumpet in his left hand. He's not a Levitical priest atoning for the sins in heaven. The atonement finished on the cross. You have been given a fake Jesus. The very fake Jesus that the Apostle Paul said you ought to be warned about in 2 Corinthians 11. Get out of this false church. They are leading you astray into eternal damnation. 